What if torque is pushed hard? You mean like if you're playing, uh... Uh, if you're playing... Uh, mid-boxes kind of area? Here, I'll, uh... I'll open up the overhead. We'll, we'll do more overhead doodling. I need to turn up the music a little bit, though. You're wrong if you think that I'll be just like you. Alright. Overhead right here. And I need to bring it up for you guys right here. Alright. Uh, sorry, I had to check a team speak message. All right, so, whoops, how did I draw an X? Did I not draw that X? Interesting. I must have saved over my copy with an X right there. Oh, God damn it. Oh, that's really agitating. Now I have to go find the overhead view of the map again. All right, whatever. We're going to use blue. Ignore that X. That X doesn't exist. What? <laughs> Alright, so, when you are playing on, when you're playing on this map, right, uh, and you're playing, I can go a little, th I need brighter blue, brighter blue, and I need a little thicker. Alright, so you're playing there, and they do like some kind of uh, some kind of torque heavy push, right? Like, let's say they send two there, right? And then they've got their one at sniper, and they've got one at window. I don't know if that's what they would run, but, uh, you know, assuming that. Uh, they're going to have two options, right? They're going to have the option of... They're, first, they're going to throw smokes. If you see torque bow get covered in smokes, then you know that uh, there's something weird happening, right? So... If you see Torque Cut and Cover and Smoke, pay, like, pay attention to that. And then your next thing is going to be like you're going to see the shadows picking up Torque Bow and you're going to see it get picked up. You have two options. You can either push the fight, which, going back to the laws of Gears of War, may not work. Uh, but, you know, that would be just simply pushing like that somehow. And, um, and again, probably not the most recommended unless, you know... Uh, actually, you can do that, uh, you just have to know that, like, you have more than, don't push it by yourself, essentially, is, like, the major down thing. Like, you want to have multiple people pushing, because you know one of their guys is going to have bow out, at least for a couple seconds, which gives you that advantage in that fight. Um, your other option is to cross them out, right, because you know they have only a couple options after they pick up bow. They can stand there, and they can, and they can bow you, they can push your nades, or push across, or they can fall back, right? If they fall back, falling back and sitting there are like the two more common ones that I've seen, and they're going to be susceptible to getting crossed down. You're basically, if you lose bow, you're in a bad spot because bow provides a lot of pressure that most people don't uh, don't really understand. So. Uh, you need to be conscious of where Bo is. So like I said, you know, call out Bo is Baird or whatever character is. Torque Bo is Baird. And, and where they're moving. They're heading to their nades. Because most teams will pick up a power weapon and then rotate up top, right? So you kind of have the option of, let's see, you have a guy here, guy here, guy here, right? So you can either try to make that push or you could try to rotate for Sniper. And basically what you're doing in this situation is if I delete all of this is you're hoping that their setup is going to be take up top right you're hoping that they're gonna take up top with at least one two people so your goal oops as if that's where the other two people are your goal is to get the sniper with your three people that you have available here. Meanwhile, meanwhile, your nades guy can rotate up top and probably keep them busy with nades. So, like, 
that this, even though he's in a disadvantage, he has grenades. So as long as he plays smart, like he you know pays attention when Bo's charging at him, he can keep them busy with nades. Because if Bo charges and aims down this direction, then he can throw a nade underneath them. So it's it's pretty easy to, 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 to distract them when they're doing that. And what this is going to do is you're basically playing for the sniper pickup, and depending on how these two play it, you, for the kills. A bad team is going to push you. A bad team is going to try to defend the sniper pickup. A good team is going to run away. Right? They're going to try to group up. They are going to be rotating, typically, when they see you start to rotate. So when you go for the sniper pickup, um, this guy needs to know that he needs to play for his life. Like this guy right here. And then your goal is going to be basically to reset. Because what you've done now is after all of this has happened. Like let's say, let's say these two guys at uh you know here and here decide to run right instead of fight you so basically what your new situation is going to look like oops keep that blurred out so what your new situation is going to be like is essentially something some weird combination of that right like some some four up top combination and you've got well, I'm, I'm just going to do this for argument's sake. Uh, you're going to have some combination to down low. The difference is, the instead of the line being like this down the middle of the map, you've now kind of canceled that out, and you've made the line this. So now, instead of the, you know the map being divided in half like where you have that half and they have that half, it's now, as a team, you guys control all of this. Oops. And their team controls all of this. Now, yes, they can torque down low, and you can argue that, but realistically, like, in terms of in terms of property owned, like, you have all of this, right? And look at what like what's marked on here, right? You've got nades, torque bow, nades, and snipe, all within your property. So simply by rotating the map and going for sniper and forcing not like avoiding the torque bow guy, not not fighting, um, you guys have taken sniper and are now controlling the map. If torque bow is going for kills, like if they're sitting up top and torque bow is going for kills, sniper should be able to track him and, and, and snipe him, right? If he's aiming over these walls. If he's aiming down the stairs, you want to keep sniper like kind of mirroring the torque bow and watching him as best as possible. Um, and then you want to also advance your people up, right? Like, so kind of like a game of chess, like you want to have your guy, oops, that's the wrong color. You want to have your guys essentially, basically, instead of, ah, uh, all right, green line again. So instead of your guys being all the way back here, you want them like here, here, uh, maybe not in the middle. Eh, maybe middle's not bad here. And well, let's just say something like that, right? Um. So now you have the ability to pick up nades. God, come on, switch. You have the ability to pick up nades. You have but the next bow is available to you, which if you slide it like this. It'll be hard. You like you basically won't be get torque bowed, because like if you get torque bowed, your sniper should be able. Like let's say this is Bo right here, and he's looking like this. Uh, I've already used that color. He's looking like this at torque bow. If he bows this guy sliding that, then this sniper should be able to hit that shot. You know what I mean? Or if this sniper should be able to hit that shot. Like however, however you want to play that out. Um, so, like, you, you've got a trade situation there, and their power weapon's dead. Like, now, the harder part is... Uh, the harder part of that is, like, you know, just making sure that your power weapon player is in the right position. But with accurate callouts, you should be, you know, you should be fine with that. So then, like, assuming a perfect scenario, like, in a, a perfect, whoops, a perfect world... Like, basically, what will happen is you stack up two sets of nades, a sniper, and a torque bow. Um, 
you can retake up top and essentially you want to do that in a simple way of having your torque bow sit here and your your everyone else push up one side your torque bow guy is basically going to be watching for them to run and your other three are going to be making the play and you're going to be wanting to do so with nades so like let's say you throw nades up here so they land right here and then you throw nades up these stairs so they land right here this guy is forced to stay in his spot or run down the stairs while this guy is forced to run away does that make sense so like now you can single target off this guy right you can kill him and assuming that nobody was killed it's only they have they, they only have torque bow maybe in a best case scenario they have nades but they probably they probably don't they probably used them at some point but assuming even if they have nades like they're just going to counter your nade push so like you have four nades you can make the play pretty easily the important part is just knowing where bow can hit from up top so like when you're making these movements you know knowing that like if you pick up these nades and you need to rotate them over you hug this wall so bow can't aim down on you So I know that's like a lot of hypotheticals. It's really hard to kind of go over strategies like that. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the, the best I can do playing out the scenarios. Because, like, if you think in a hypothetical situation, best case scenario, nobody dies because the teams are completely even. Hopefully that helps. What other questions have we got in the chat? Feel free to ask questions. What did I show Chris and Canals? Uh, Chris plays high side on Canals. I can open up. Uh, I can open up Canals. Give me one second. Uh, Denial is about to make an announcement on Twitter, so I'm trying to prep for that. Okay, so on canals, basically what I showed him is like, What's up, Produn? How you doing, man? I showed him uh, how to play high side. I hate this overhead view, by the way. But uh, I showed him basically how to play high side. So, oh my god, this black color. Uh, I hate all this resets. So, like, if he's playing high side, right, and he's alone, and the other team sends... Why did it switch that color? The other team sends two people. So, saying, assuming like this is the scenario, right? Like he needs to play for his life. Like now his job is no longer to take this. No. His job is now to like play his life and deal damage. If he gets pushed, he needs to run, like put shots in and run. So, uh, you know, it's, it's mostly that kind of thing that I showed him. You know, different scenarios. If he's got a 1v1, like how to play that depending on you know what's happening in, in his 1v1 um, and knowing what his team's doing now red team has control of 
all of this extra space. I can't see behind my microphone. And blue team, you know, has less space. So it's that same concept of, of taking control of the map slowly but surely. So like now that you have mid, you can use nades up in, in high side. And that'll force, just by throwing a nade like that, anybody who might be in this area to make that line like that is now forced back. So like, let's say they had a guy right here. Oh, shit. Let's say they had a guy right here, and you throw a nade like that, and now he's forced back in the pillars, right? So now, instead of the line being where it is right there, it's over here. Well, you've just gained, like, this space. Now, red team has control of all of this extra space. I can't see behind my microphone. And blue team, you know, has less space. So it's that same concept of, of taking control of the map slowly but surely. So like now that you have mid, you can use nades up in, in high side. And that'll force, just by throwing a nade like that, anybody who might be in this area to make that line like that is now forced back. So like, let's say they had a guy right here. Oh, shit. Let's say they had a guy right here. And you throw a nade like that, and now he's forced back in the pillars, right? So now instead of the line being where it is right there, it's over here. Well, you've just gained like this space, oops, this space, and you can take control of that. And now you're like, you're threatening, you know, basically they're, they're stuck. By this point, they're typically like, they're not even in water. Like they're on baby stairs and, and like that, right? Usually by this point. And usually what teams will try to do is they'll try to do a flip where they come around underneath bridge and reset the map on the other side. So, but that, that's kind of, that's, that's more in depth than what I showed him. Basically what I showed him was just this high side play and, you know, how to deal with, you know, one, two, or three people or zero people for that matter. Um, you know, the appropriate way of doing that. What's up, Arco2015? Man, I hate when Twitch chat gives color, like that weird color here. Let me show. You see this color? Like, what is this boof ass color, man? Anyways, um. So, uh, four low, like, aggressive strat. Uh. I really don't like showing detailed strats for the most part because. The issue with that is like there can be a conflict of interest. Um, like if you if you think about basically uh, my position on the team, like on my team as like a, a strat creator and uh, observer, and then uh, hold on, a hey, denial denial announced it. Uh, Denial Esports just entered League of Legends, by the way. I, uh, I built them a League of Legends team. Um, okay, so... I have to make sure I'm following all these guys, too. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. I follow him, I follow him, I follow him, I follow him. No, not a CS team. I'll, I'll link the uh, tweet in chat. Uh, 
Um, okay, so uh, for low strat. Okay, so like I'll I'll show you kind of how it can play out. Like first off, when you're running for low, like you need to either play for like you need to know what you're playing for, right? So let's say uh, let's say they're doing like that default. Like okay, so blue team's doing this default setup where like they have you know something like this, right? This guy's going here. Sniper is rotating high. And you've got two people down here, right? And you're doing four low. You're red team. You're doing four low. What most teams will do is decide, are we playing for torque bow or are we playing for kills? Typically, if you're doing four low, you are playing for kills, right? Because you don't need four people to pick up torque bow. You need, like, you could have one guy tor go torque bow, one of these guys help him and still have one guy here, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're playing four low, no, not a challenger series team. Playing for low, you're going for kills, right? So your goal is to kill these two people, or at least one of them. So typically what teams will do is they'll smoke out the torque bow and push two through water, and they'll push two through sidewalk. So what you're going to end up happening is a collapse and pinch on these guys, right? And if you time it right, which means that these guys almost need to delay by like half a second, is you have these guys getting shot at from both sides simultaneously they're going to be paying attention like their cone of vision is typically going to be like this right because they're going to be looking at this area they're not going to be paying attention behind them so much maybe this guy will you know maybe this guy will see behind them but i typically it's not going to be both of them unless they see it early so uh, when you do this, like you need to know you're playing for these kills. You also need to know that this guy is going to get here, and he's going to be starting to lancer down on you guys. And sniper might not rotate all the way high side. Like if it's a good team, sniper is going to stop. So like your goal, your objective in this, your short term objective is to kill these two people as fast as possible. From there, you have two options, right? So we'll we'll reset this. Let's say. <clears throat> You've killed these two people, so now you have two people. You guys got two people here, and like the fight kind of took you like this. And they've got a guy middle bridge, and their sniper stayed to snipe at you guys. Excuse me. You now have two options, right? You can take middle bridge, you can uh, or you can take snipe bridge, their sniper, push their sniper, whatever. I guess, or you could uh, go for torque bow. So you kind of have three options, right? But you have two separate 2v1s. Now, a 2v1 is good, a 3v1 is better, a 4v1 is even better, right? So, like, what you could uh, do here, depending on the situation, you know, how you want to play this out, because, uh, you know, it, it could go different, like, different teams have different strengths. Ideally, playing slow is the best, but in this situation, you've got a 4 on 2, right? And you you typically don't want them to to get back together. But if they do get back together, right? Like, let's say they're smart players, they're going to meet somewhere in here and they might even try to flip the map but let's not let's not worry about the flip the map part right now let's like let's say that their meeting point their meeting zone is right here right so if you split up and you send two to chase this guy and you send two to chase this guy depending on the pathing and all of that stuff you're risking a chance where there's going to be a two on two at some point like let's say these guys coming from mid bridge get there before these guys like they get stuck somewhere so now there's a two on two right which is a fair fight, and you have a 4 on 2. You do not want a fair fight at all when you have a 4 on 2 advantage. You always want your fight to be 3 on 2 or 4 on 2, or 3 on 1 or 2 on 1 or, or something like that, right? You don't want a 2 on 2. So that is part issue with this. Now, what you can do instead of all that, uh, actually, I can go back forward, is have this guy come with them. So now you have three people pushing this side, and one guy kind of floating back here. And he's not really forcing a fight, he's just playing for his life, but playing to watch as well. So what happens is when these guys push up, they're forcing a three on two, if these guys stay. Or these guys are going to turn around, and they're going to come back and try to chase this guy. In which case, he's just running, which is, is very simple to do. So it kind of depends on the situations, but again, like... If you do it like this, then you have a three on two in theory when they meet up. And if they start fighting this, then this guy can push up. Like if the fight is taking place right here, and the squiggly, then 
you've got your guy kind of sitting back who's in position to put in like just lancer damage or pistol damage. Alright, I'm gonna clear all this off. Oops. I'm gonna clear all this off. What are the any other questions? I can answer questions as long as you guys got them. It's fun, I, I like doing this, so. Yeah, like that's that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people will just keep rolling with that momentum and like they'll try to they'll try to do two on two like they'll try to just force that in. They, they, they think to themselves all right two people are chasing one guy two people are chasing another guy but realistically like if you're going against envy right and you've got like let's just say praise and toy alive they know that they need to meet up they they know just instinctually and fran's going to be telling them group up like you guys need to meet up somewhere so you know Yeah, anytime, Marco, 2015. I appreciate you stopping by and asking the question, man. Ugh. Oh. Hey, thank you for the follow, man. I appreciate him. I guess I should move this back to the top, huh? Move top. Thank you so much. Other questions, guys? Ask away. All right, Christamon. See you later, man. Thanks for stopping by. Let's see how many embers I have. Oh damn! I need to gamble some of these, right? Ah, unlucky. Uh, boom over snipe on clock tower. All right, let me open up clock tower real quick. J-A-X-X-Z COD. Thank you so much for the follow, man. I greatly appreciate it, guys. Alright. Let's take a look here at good old clock. Alright, so let's say you said, is it ever worth to grab boom over snipe on clock tower? Um, okay, so basically 
here's the issue with grab and boom right grabbing boom on this map in ue can be a trick strat and and envy will actually do it uh, I've seen them do it before, where like they'll fake a nade strat, but they'll just immediately take push into boom, right? So if you play out like you think they're gonna do a nade strat, you push up top or whatever. By the time you get sniper, they've already picked up the boom shot. Um, it's a risk. What I typically tell like my team, for example, you'll notice uh, there's actually. Uh, let me see. I might be able to pull this up for us, actually. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. If I can pull this up, this will be a great example. Tears of War Season 1 Finals. Uh, Denial versus Envious. Mute. Where's Clock Tower? Clock Tower is last in the series. There's a perfect example of what I taught them, like how to handle a snipe pick, uh, pickup, um, that happened during the season one finals that I can show you guys. Uh, I don't remember what round it was that we picked up Sniper, and we did it, though. We lost the round, but that was more because of a mistake on our part. It might be this round? Yep, I think it's this round. Alright. Uh, is it this round? Uh... Nope, not looking like it. Nope, definitely not looking like I remember this round. Yeah, this is not the round. I swear to you it happens, so. I promise, guys, it happened. I know it happened. Okay, they picked up nades. Okay, we pick up sniper. So it's this round. Okay. So, right now, we see two people right here for Envy, and then we saw two people at Well, We saw one person. We can assume the other person's in host pocket. Right? So let's watch this. We smoke off. We smoke off. Uh, you can't see my mouse. Son of a bitch. Hold on. Uh, properties. Okay. So turn off that. Turn on this. Edit. Okay. Now, can you see my mouse? You can't see my mouse still. Properties. Capture cursor. Why is it not doing that? Okay, whatever. Um, there we go. Now you can see. So we throw a smoke right here, right? Yeah, there we go. We throw a smoke right here, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to block off the view of the guy that's off screen over here from crossing us. And it's going to block off the view of Praise right here for crossing us. So you're going to see the shadow of a guy who just jumped over. He already did. Uh, I'll back it up a tiny bit. And let's see, can we slow this down? So what you're going to see is you're going to see like the faint movement through that smoke. Praise is going to see it too. Right there. He jumped over. And now we're inside Boom Pit. That's our first guy. Our second guy is going to be our sniper. And what this is going to do is they're probably going to rotate to try to take up top. We're prepared for that. We know, we know they're going to do that. Right now we have one guy sitting back pillar and one guy sitting back jail. And as soon as they make this push, we run. You can see him running right now. He gets out. A nade's wasted. They've pushed up top, and they have up top control. We've picked up boom shot. Now, look, I'm going to pause it right here. Do you see that faint little reflection, that little gleam right there? That's our sniper. So we actually send two people into boom shot when we, when we pick up boom shot. So, um... Uh, 
Oh god, I just spazzed out my thing. Okay, so it, if you look at the overhead, if you take a look at the overhead, I'll do it in yellow. Essentially what happens is we pick up sniper and we rotate it out down low. Okay? Simple. We leave one guy here, one guy here, and this guy can either be, you know, in either of these spots. That's the same guy. And then we have one guy pushing the boom and we have sniper get ready to push in the boom. Right? So the ideal setup for us is a guy somewhere in this area. I'm going to put it like this. Guy back pillar and two in boom, right? And our guys in boom are both going to be pushed to this sandbag and one of them is going to be snipers and the sniper is going to be orange. Right? So what this does is even if they stop and set up positions, like they take up positions like this, which is kind of the standard, uh, and let's say they have one guy back pillar. Sometimes this guy is over here or over here. Doesn't really matter. The sniper can hit everyone. He can hit that and he can hit that and even if that that guy can't push down. So like he has full vision to pick off anybody who's trying to lancer our boom pickup. Now in this situation, they didn't even try to lancer, they tried to kill the guy up top, but the guy up top got, knows that his job is to play for his life and be annoying. So he runs, right? So now they've wasted a nade, they've taken position, we've got boom. Now for us to get out, uh, our sniper sits where he is, and boom shot pushes out. Because sniper is going to keep him down. Sniper can then push up, sniper is going to watch like this. Boom shot jumps out and comes up, and then we retake up top. And you'll watch that happen in this VOD is we do that. It's just our push up top is disorganized. And and we lose because simply because of that. If we had been more organized in our push up top, we would have won. But like we have a guy in spawn. Our sniper and our boom are both pushing up. Sniper watches while Boom gets out. Then Sniper realizes he can get out because they're not crossing. We actually jump over into nades at this point too. And then here's where the disorganization comes in. We say we need to retake our side up top, which is a good play. But Solar's got a little bit hurt, so he fell back at the same time that we pushed up. Mental's still crossing down low, so it's not all at the same time, right? And then Praise throws a nade. So that forces Lava to push up to this back pillar and get down. And then it goes to hell from there. And our boom shot doesn't get any boom kills. So we made the initial rotation having Sniper perfectly. It was the after rotation that ended up going poorly. So I know this is kind of like a long way around. I think that grabbing Sniper and then using that Sniper to get boom is more efficient. Uh... But there is the possibility to do a trick strat and grab boom first. And boom is ultimate, like, boom is the better weapon. Don't get me wrong. It's just the way that the map plays out on UE. There's not really a safe way to run a base of where you get boom shot every round. Because you get stuck, basically, in boom pit against a good team.